Ship 37 didn't blow up or damage the pad. It actually passed a major fuel transfer test. But something unexpected happened that forced SpaceX to pause and delay the static fire. On the morning of July 30th, the road near Boca Chica Beach closed, signaling Ship 37 was about to attempt its first static fire. But instead of doing it at the usual Massey test site, SpaceX chose to do this one at Launch Pad A. This is the same pad where they normally test the giant super heavy boosters or launch a full rocket stack. Doing it here can help them save time because the Massey site is still getting ready. Even now, after many weeks, Massey only recently finished a fuel test with Ship 38. Everyone was focused on Ship 37 as SpaceX began fueling after the road closed. This was their first time testing a new setup, using a freshly updated quick disconnect arm linked to a new rocket port. The arm resembled a robotic clamp gripping the rocket side. Fueling went well. They first loaded a small amount from the tank farm. Then, they tested the engine igniters, an important but subtle step to confirm if the engines would start correctly. SpaceX only added a small amount of fuel to avoid any major risks during the test. A full tank could have caused a huge explosion if something failed, which is why they also shut down the nearby highway for safety. The test went smoothly. After that, they ran another check called the detonation suppression test, which helps catch issues like leaks or rising pressure. It's a backup system that can stop tests if needed. Sensors kept an eye on everything throughout the process. Once the data looked good, they drained the fuel, ending the first round of testing without any issues. Next up was the static fire test, where engines are briefly fired while the rocket stays on the launch pad. SpaceX started loading a limited amount of super cold fuel, just enough for testing based on how many engines they wanted to ignite. But the process was interrupted, not by a technical glitch, but by a security breach. A boat entered the no-go zone offshore, forcing SpaceX to halt the test for safety reasons. An hour passed before signs suggested the test might resume. Fuel venting was visible, which usually means a restart is underway. But then the launch tower's support arms, known as chopsticks, were repositioned and locked back onto the rocket, typically a sign that the test had been canceled or paused again. This suggests there may have been additional issues not immediately visible to the public. The test was paused again, and SpaceX is now expected to try again around July 31st. Even though the static fire did not happen yet, there was still a lot of progress. The new fueling system worked, and the earlier tests were all successful. Soon we will see Ship 37 fire up its engines for the first time on this pad. That moment will bring the roar of 33 engines back to Starbase for the first time in more than two months. Now let's take a quick look at Ship 38 over at the Massey test site. Things are going well there too. Afternoon, on the same day, July 30th, SpaceX did a successful fuel test with Ship 38. This time, there were no problems with the high-pressure helium tanks, which are known as composite overwrapped pressure vessels. Viewers got a close look at a smaller engine system used to steer the rocket in space, and it performed as expected. SpaceX also tested the fuel dome by filling only the methane tank while leaving the liquid oxygen tank empty. This test likely aimed to see how the rocket holds up with uneven fuel levels, which can happen during prep or if pressure drops unexpectedly in one tank. They wanted to confirm that the rocket's core structure can stay stable in such cases. Everything went smoothly, and SpaceX later announced that Ship 38 would be transported late at night between July 31st and August 1st. Once it arrives, they'll install the final six engines. After that, it'll be ready for its 11th flight. With Ship 37 nearing its static fire and Ship 38 preparing for engine installation, SpaceX is moving swiftly to complete its final tests on the current Starship model. These milestones aren't just technical, they're critical in the broader race to Mars. As Blue Origin ramps up its efforts, SpaceX is working to maintain its lead in the competition to reach the Red Planet first. Blue Origin recently made headlines with a new Mars mission. They confirmed that their next New Glenn rocket flight will carry a pair of NASA spacecraft heading to Mars. This is a big move and a sign that the race to reach the Red Planet is heating up.
who Glenn was supposed to go to Mars, the mission got canceled. But now, it is officially back on the schedule. The rocket will carry the escapade mission. Blue Origin's chief executive officer, Dave Limp, shared the news online and called it an exciting moment. Escapade will be New Glenn's first mission beyond Earth and the first time multiple spacecraft will study the area around Mars that is affected by the planet's magnetic field. This new success may put pressure on Elon Musk. While SpaceX is still working through some technical delays, Blue Origin is moving forward. Just two days before the static fire test, Blue Origin shared a video showing tests of their own rocket parts. They tested a system that helps steer the rocket in space using hydrogen peroxide. This steering system can give 20,000 pounds of force in any direction. It helps the rocket aim for a soft landing on a sea platform, even in windy conditions. While that achievement is notable, it still falls short of the capabilities demonstrated by Starship. Blue Origin's next flight will be important because the United States Space Force wants to see two successful launches before they allow their payloads to ride on board. But Blue Origin has already been approved to compete for those contracts, alongside SpaceX and ULA. Blue Origin also has some business deals lined up. Amazon, which is owned by Blue Origin's founder, has booked at least 12 launches with New Glenn to put up satellites for its internet service called Project Kuiper. This is Amazon's version of what SpaceX is doing with Starlink. New Glenn is also going to help NASA with its moon plans. The rocket will carry the Blue Moon lander. One model of this lander has been picked for NASA's fifth mission in the Artemis program. That crude moon landing could happen as early as 2029. To make that happen, Blue Origin is working faster than ever. They want to launch the first version of the Blue Moon Lander in 2025. This lander can carry 3,000 kilograms of supplies to the moon. If it lands safely, it will be the largest lander ever to reach the lunar surface. Meanwhile, SpaceX is building its own lunar lander version of Starship for earlier Artemis missions. The first mission with people is planned for no earlier than 2026. Blue Origin is showing a lot of progress, and if their moon lander works in 2025, they could take the lead. That would put more pressure on SpaceX to fix its delays and get Starship ready sooner. But let's not forget what SpaceX has already done. In 2016, they became the first private company to land a rocket at sea. In 2020, they were the first to send NASA astronauts to the space station. In 2021, they won the contract to build NASA's moon lander, beating Blue Origin. And while SpaceX has sent thousands of Starlink satellites into space, Amazon only just started sending up a small number of Kuiper satellites in 2025. SpaceX launches rockets almost every week. They have a bold goal to send people to Mars, and they are moving fast. Even though Blue Origin has a lot of money and smart people, they have been slow. Elon Musk and his team take big risks and move quickly, which is why they are still leading. So as we wait for Ship 37's engines to fire up, one thing is clear. SpaceX is not slowing down. They are still the ones everyone else is trying to catch.